ना संघर्ष ना तकलीफे क्या है मजा फिर जीने में तूफान भी थम जाएगा जब लक्ष्य रहेगा सीने में A very good good evening to respected dignitaries and my dear friends. After the successful completion of day one of leadership summit, I, Hani Khatri, Vice Chairman Amravati, Vikasa, welcome you all for the second day of leadership summit, a paper presentation web series organized by Amravati and Nagpur branch of Vikasa, along with eight branches including Nandir, Ernakulam. Kolhapur, Surat, Satara, Aurangabad, Ahmednagar, and Akola branches of Vikasa and Sikasa. Today's subject is a highly vibrant and dynamic sector of the Indian economy, MSME sector, the sector which contributes about 29% to the India's GDP, comprises almost half of its export, and employs over 11 crore of workers. And now, with India aiming to be Atmanirbhar, that is self-reliant, this sector is in focus more than ever. While many think that large companies dominate, in reality, it is the small units which drive our economy. And now, let us not keep you waiting and get started with our event. For this, I would like to recognize the presence of our paper presenters, Mr. Harshil Kevar Ramani from Amravati, Mr. Atharva Devara from Pune, Ms. Ellis Singh from Havra, West Bengal. Our pillars, without whom this event would be incomplete, CA Akshay Gulhane, Vikasa Chairman Nagpur, CA Kirit Kalyani, Chairman of Nagpur Branch of ICI, CA Sunil Salampuria Sir, Vikasa Chairman Amravati, CA Vipul Patil Sir, Chairman of Amravati Branch ICI. The world is full of diamonds and gems, and we are having some of them here today to build this event. Our chief guest for the event, CA Jay Chaira Sir, Board of Studies Chairman. Our guest of honor, CA Vishal Doshi Sir, WIRC Vice Chairman. Our session chairman for the session, CA Zulfi Shah Sir. Judges for the session, CA Sitaram Ayer Sir, CA Bridget Fakur Sir. For today's session, now I would like to request our mentor, CA Akshay Gulhani, sir, to give his opening remarks. Thank you, Hani. Good evening, friends. For the second day of our five-day webinar series on Leadership Summit, today we are going to have a subject, MSME, a boost for economy. MSME, a boost for economy. Hmm? We have galaxy of have galaxy uh, leaders with us now. Uh, Chairman, now. student skill enrichment board, Jay Chaira sir is going to join late as he has some other commitment with the president. Respected Vice Chairman WRC, CA Vishal Doshi sir. Branch Chairman in absentia, Nagpur branch, CA Kirit Kalyani sir. Branch Chairman Amrauti branch in absentia, Vibul Patel ji. CA Julfe Shah sir. Our vice chairman WRC as well as past chairman Nagpur branch and today's session chairman. All the dignitary judges today we have Sitarama Nayar sir, and all my dear friends. Friends, I will not take you much time because we have ample ample of uh, leaders available uh, today. So I request everyone to be attentive for today's MSME and best of luck for the paper presenters uh, going to present today. Happy learning. Thank you so much, Hani. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Moving further, I would request C. Ellen Joseph, sir, Sikasa chairman, Enaculum, to introduce our guest of honor, C. Vishal Doshi, sir. Good evening, everyone. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce CA Vishal Doshi. Vishal sir currently serves as the Vice Chairman of the WR Western India Regional Council. He is also a senior partner at KC Mehta and Company, one of the leading audit firms with offices across the country. For more than 20 years, 
professional experience, which also specializes in the area of convergence from Indian Gap to Indias. Over the last few years, he has successfully completed more than a few prestigious Indias implementation and convergence projects, particularly in the energy and manufacturing sectors. He is also a qualified information systems auditor and valuer, and also possesses a diploma in insurance and risk management. Vishal sir also has a strong commitment to the profession and has previously served as the chairman of the Baroda branch of the ICI. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request our guest of honor, CA Vishal Dutni, sir, to give his remarks. Yeah. Good evening and thank you, uh, Ani. Uh, Akshay, Vigasa chairman of Nagpur, Alan Joseph, uh, Zulfesh Bhai, uh, Sita Ramanji, and all the dignitaries uh, who are involved in uh, organizing this uh, leadership summit. In fact, when I was going through the brochure, uh, which uh, Akshay had shared with me a few days back, I was extremely happy to look at the synergies that are being created in this tough situation. Uh, synergies in terms of the number of branches coming together, and that also of two regions, regions that is Vikasa and Sikasa. So that itself is a bonding that uh, this uh, virtual world is uh, helping us uh, create, which you know, otherwise physically we might not have even thought of or dreamt of that uh, we would have the uh, branches of these two regions coming together for this uh, leadership summit. Even when I heard the name of the paper presenters today, that we had the uh, one of the presenters who is from uh, Howrah, Kolkata, and uh, uh, the rest from the Western region. So there also we look and the presentation is definitely these are the filtered uh, final presenters, but the original paper uh, contribution would have come from, from uh, Pan India. So that is indeed a, a great achievement and my compliments to Akshay and the whole team, everybody who is directly or indirectly involved in this uh, leadership summit. I, I am extremely happy and I wish you all the best for that. Friends, when I look at the topics also, uh, over the five days that uh, would be getting covered, I, I feel that you know these are the topics which actually should be for qualified chartered accountants and not for students because the variety of the topics that are given and the relevance in our, I would say as a practicing chartered accountant in my day-to-day -day practice, I would not find any of these topics which would be, uh, you know, not relevant or I would even say not futuristic. Uh, yesterday you had on the data analysis and internal audit. Uh, today you are having on MSME, you would be now then having on corporate sector, LLP, the new age business, cryptocurrency, IBC. I, I feel that these are the topics uh, that are definitely more relevant and I'm, I'm extremely happy to see students coming forward and making presentations, technical presentations on these topics. And that gives a lot of satisfaction to me, I would say, as an office bearer and also personally as a professional that, uh, you know, the future of our profession is in really safe hands that, uh, you know, when at such a young age, uh, you, you know, in sports, we normally say that you catch them young. Uh, so I would feel that even for these topics that are futuristic, maybe uh, four, three years, four years down the line, they would be found everywhere. And uh, if our students today are uh, preparing and making presentations on these topics, I, I feel that really the future of our profession is in uh, safe hands. Uh, friends, when I talk of MSME, which is the topic for today, uh, we have uh, Zulfesh Bhai, who is the session chairman. And uh, I, I, I really respect him for his uh, knowledge and experience. And uh, I, I would not definitely enter into his territory, but I would just uh, give uh, a couple of my snippets that on the MSME front, Hani has already given an excellent introduction. And uh, I would just add to it that MSME are the backbone of our economy. Uh, although we can say that, you know, 80% of the turnover or 70% of the turnover, when we look at the listed companies and the large uh, groups, we find uh, uh, big, big uh, amounts of money and the taxation and all those coming. But ultimately, I feel that those companies are able to run uh, and achieve these turnover or profits or I would say great valuations because of the support of the MSME sector. Uh, these, these are the uh, sectors, these are the industries, I would say, 
which are spread across not only large cities but even small towns and villages uh, when we look at the employment opportunity uh, these are the uh, uh, sectors which give a lot of employment generation and if you look look overall also within our economy that a lot of the statistics uh, move around the msme sector with respect to employment with respect to the taxation with respect to the uh, turnover and the areas and the support that is being given and if we look in the last uh, decade or so if we have look like a msme act you know where there is so much of protection that has been extended to the uh, sm the small and medium enterprises and uh, recently because of covid there has been a large scale tweaking i would say with respect to the definition of the msme and the eligibility criteria the loans the uh, benefits that have been extended to the msme which which itself shows the importance of the msme sector in our economy and and i am very happy to see, uh, see that we are going to have a paper presentation on the msme boost for the economy so my best wishes to all the students who are going to make the presentation and i would request all those others who are listening to the presentation to kindly keep them motivated uh, because they it's not an easy task for students to make presentations i know how difficult it is even for me today if i have to make a technical presentation uh because you know when you are speaking in front of hundreds of uh, uh, students or people you have to be technically correct and uh, that is always a uh, challenge and so my request is please uh, give a lot of uh, moral booster though virtually it might be but give a lot of moral booster to the uh, paper presenters and my best wishes to the presenters and uh, uh, great efforts congratulations and compliments to akshay hani and the whole team over here thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact and come before you and share my views thank you and wish you all the best thank you sir thank you for enlightening us with your gracious words now moving further i would request ms phoebe rina george secretary enaculum sikasa to introduce our session chairman c zulfir saha sir i think she is not here uh, ani if you can uh, uh, read the bio of zulfesh bhai yeah. i know uh, everybody knows uh, zulfesh sir but it is our uh, duty to uh, you know uh, reach to the each to each ca student so uh, we request Ani, please kindly uh, introduce your professor. Yes, let me introduce uh, julfes sir <laughs> in my own style he is our friend philosopher as well as guide always available for whenever we need uh, julfes sir's guidance he is past vice chairman wrc as well as past chairman nagpur branch sir is engaged in msme uh, since long since inception and uh, he has delivered a lot many uh, lectures on msme as well as subsidies 
uh, we will come to know more about it whenever sir is uh, going to address the ca student so i request uh, dulpesh bhai to uh, uh, address the gathering sir over to you dulpesh sir thank you akshay and uh, a very good evening to all of you आवाज आ रही है अक्षय यस सर यस सो द चीफ गेस्ट फॉर टूडेज लीडरशिप समिट डे टू माय एक्स कलीग इन द काउंसिल एंड विद यू आई हैव वर्क इन टू टर्म्स इन द रीजनल काउंसिल जय शेरा हु विल बी जॉइनिंग अस वेरी शॉर्टली एंड द प्रेजेंट वाइस चेयरमैन ऑफ डब्ल्यू आई सी my friend ca vishal ji doshi chairman of nagpur branch kirit kalyani a very enthusiastic vikasa chairman of nagpur branch akshay gulane ji chairman of amravati branch vipul patel ji secretary sunil salampuria ji the judge for today's very senior and uh, our guide as far as msm is concerned mr sitaraman ayer ca sitaraman ji ayer and the entire team of vikasa mukul ani pradnya joseph rina george aur bhi jo apne vikasa ki team members hai uh, sabhi ko and my dear student friends let me take this opportunity to congratulate to greet you on this great day of international sme msme day today is the international msme day 27 june so you have kept the topic on a very apt day ki uh, aaj msm uh, msme international antarrashtriya msme day ke din aapne msme ke leadership summit mein paper presenter aur msme topic ke sath aapne ye aaj ka uh, webinar rakha hai and i congratulate amravati branch and uh, nagpur branch for such a wonderful <coughs> thought process of series of webinar five day series of webinar uh, my good friend brijesh papad past chairman of amravati branch has joined uh, welcome brijesh bhai in this session and uh, he is also practicing to msme so it will be we will have a अरे अयर साहब अयर साहब आवाज बंद कीजिए आपका आवाज आ रहा है आवाज आ रहा है आपका डिस्टर्ब हो रहा है तो टुडे आई एम गिवन टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट थ्री पेपर प्रेजेंटर्स आर देयर एंड थ्री फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री एंड द टॉपिक इज एस एमएसएमई बूस्ट फॉर इकोनॉमी सो boost to economy and uh, in the true sense it is a boost to the economy msme as you all know <clears throat> msme is one of the most important sector as far as the indian economy is concerned and it contributes to a, for almost uh, 30% of the growth and produces about 35% of the total industrial output of the country so msme is having a very large chunk in the india's economy it gives 45% of the india's exports exports mein 45% ka share hai msme units ka and there are about more than 7 crores msme units registered in india uh, throughout india and 20% of the msmes are based in rural uh, india so uh, it is providing employment huge employment potential around 13 crores employees uh, are being employed by the msme sector so it is a uh, very important sector very uh, current uh, in the current scenario it is a very uh, you can say <coughs> is the hot uh, talked about sector msme everybody wants to become msme now even traders are coming ki kya hum msme mein aa sakte hai because of the change in the definition today yesterday only we got this circular the detail circular is out in the change of the definition and many uh, you can say ins and outs will be analyzed after uh, reading the definition interpreting the clauses mentioned in the definition so it it uh, the definition itself will become one session 
फॉर द वेबिनार कि उसके अंदर में कई चीजें हम लोग एनालाइज करके और लोगों के साथ शेयर करेंगे लोगों का क्या व्यू है वो लेंगे अब ये जो डेफिनेशन चेंज हुए हैं इससे ऑलमोस्ट 95 परसेंट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज इंडस्ट्रियल यूनिट्स एंड सर्विस यूनिट्स इन इंडिया आर नाउ अंडर द स्कोप ऑफ द एम एस एम ई एंड ओनली फाइव टू सिक्स परसेंट आर नाउ आउटसाइड द स्कोप ऑफ द एम एस एम ई इतना बड़ा एक चेंज आया है सिंस लास्ट फोर्टीन ईयर्स द एम एस एम ई डेफिनेशन में नॉट अ सिंगल वर्ड वॉज चेंज एंड नाउ लकीली वी हैव गॉट अ वेरी डायनामिक minister our own nitin ji gadkari as an mm msme minister and he is a visionary as far as the uh, industry and the foresight is concerned industrial ki kya hoga aage you can see he is a far sighted leader so he just uh, is trying to revamp the entire msme d act and first thing he has done is to change the definition that to uh, 100 ka 100 crores ka announce kiya tha maximum limits or 20 crores investment उससे भी उन्होंने चेंज कर दिया 250 करोड़ कर दिया और 50 करोड़ का इन्वेस्टमेंट कर दिया सो बाय दिस नाउ द स्कोप ऑफ एम एस हैज बिकम ब्रॉडर एंड वाइडन एंड इन दिस सिनेरियो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस इंक्लूडिंग द स्टूडेंट्स टू नो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली एम एस एम ई इज वॉट इज वॉट आर द बेनिफिट ऑफ रजिस्टरिंग एज एम एस एम ई वॉट बेनिफिट वी कैन गिव टू आर क्लाइंट्स वी कैन गिव टू दी एम एस एम ई यूनिट एज ए कंसल्टेंट and how msme helps in boosting our economy so this is a very apt topic that uh, nagpur branch and amravati branch has taken today my best wishes to the presenters or we are passing through a very challenging time even msme sector is passing through a very difficult time but uh, you know na chaah rakhne wale kabhi manzil ko dekhte nahi badhkar use tham liya karte hai aur jinke haathon mein hoti hai vakti kalam wo apni takdeer khud likh diya karte hai so we will write our own destiny again and do uh, our best to uh, re-energize re-strategize and reboot the msme sector with joining hands with each other and we are definitely partners in nation building our role is very important of guiding and advising our clients in the true sense ki kitna use lagega kitna kaisa usne aage badhna chahiye is difficult phase se use bahar lane ka ek challenge hamare liye bahut bada hai industry wala to apna industry chalayega lekin jo planning karke dena hai जो फाइनेंशियल पार्ट का हमें टेक टेक केयर करना है दैट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट एज अ कंसल्टेंट एज टू प्ले इन दिस एमएसएमई सेक्टर सो वंस अगेन माय बेस्ट विशेस टू द थ्री पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड आई वुड लाइक टू हियर व्हाट एग्जैक्टली दे हैव प्रिपेयर्ड एंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली देयर व्यूज आर ऑन द एमएसएमई एज अ बूस्टर फॉर इकॉनमी एंड कांग्रेचुलेशंस टू नागपुर ब्रांच for this wonderful leadership summit aur hamare uh, judge bhi kafi experience hai sitaraman ji ayya kafi judgment uh, barobar lege ki kaisa uh, paper hua analysis unka bahut perfect rehta hai hum bhi kabhi unse hi salah lete hai kuch kai ruk gaye atak gaye to so sir uh, you are there to take care of the students and over to the coordinator thank you very much thank you so much sir further i would request ms chetaji patak treasurer aurangabad branch of vikasa to introduce our today's judge ca sitaraman ayer sir hello am i audible yes good evening everyone i chaitali patak treasurer of aurangabad vikasa deem it my proud privilege to introduce a dynamic personality ca sitaraman ayer who is practicing in this field from last 35 years he is a senior partner of messrs khatri and ayer chartered accountants he specialized in the area of project finance and cooperative corporative advisory service his area of interest include restructuring of financially challenged companies designing and implementation of mis he has completed his schooling from south eastern railway boys high school followed by saraswati vidyalaya and his graduation from hislop college nagpur he has also completed a 3 months course of accounting at chennai conducted by sirc of icai besides his professional background he is also socially active He has several he, he has several rotary as past president, district treasurer, district secretary, 
assistant governor of Rotary District 3030. He was also past president of South Indian Association, past president of Bhagwati Padsabha, a life member of Saraswati Vidyalaya. Oh. Sitaraman Iyer likes traveling, writing blogs based on real life experience. Sir, it's our pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Over Thank to you, Hanani. Thank you, Chaitali. Now, I request Ms. Atul Agrawal, Executive Member, Ahmednagar Branch of Vikasa, to introduce our next judge for the session, CA Bridges Papad, sir. Atul, you are not audible. Hello. Am I audible now? Yeah. Yes. Good evening to one and all present here. Today, I, Anshal Agarwal from Ahmednagar branch of Vikasa, take pride in introducing our next judge for the Leadership Summit, CA Brijesh Fafat Sir. He has qualified GDC NA, Masters of Commerce, DFM, and is a fellow chartered accountant. Sir is one of the founder, pa founder partners of Fafat and Rathi firm. He was enrolled as a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India in the year 2002. Sir has an experience of 18 years in almost every field of accounting, auditing and consulting profession. He is an ardent financial professional who is well versed in tax, commercial and company laws, accounting and auditing standards, management consultancy, specialized in bank, bank finance and project subsidy. He has been providing services to a wide spectrum of clientele. He is now a financial consultant for valuable clients. Sir has also an edge on bank audits and is a certified concurrent bank auditor. He has pursued certified course on concurrent audits of banks conducted by the ICAI. Sir was the secretary and past chairman of Amravati branch of WIRC of ICAI in the year 2013 and 14. Now we welcome you, sir. Thank you, Archul. Kaun pohatsa hai kabhi apni akri manzil tak? Har kisi ke liye thoda asma baki hai. Ye tuth ko lagta hai tu udne ke kabil nahi. Such to ye hai ki tere pankho mein abhi bhi uraan baki hai. Moving towards the main part of our session, the paper presentation competition. Now, I would like to announce the rules before the starting. First, judges to note that each presenter will be given 15 minutes for each presentation. First bell will be rung at 12 minute and second and the final at 15th minute. Moving towards the paper presentation, I would request our first paper presenter, Mr. Harshil Kebal Ramani from Amravati to present his paper. Can you hear me? Yes, Harshil, you're audible. I'm sharing my screen. Is my screen shared? Yes. So I'm ready to begin. Harshal, your time starts now. What cannot even be seen managed to bring the worst slump. Economists and leaders all now thinking from where the money we should pump. But since ages we have known, not the trunk, what is to be watered is the root. It is the foundation where we have to give the boot. Hello everyone, I am Harshil Keval Ramani from Amravati branch. The world is battling with COVID-19, which has surely managed to shake the deepest foundation of human life on earth. While on one hand, the 68 day lockdown has badly fractured the economy. On other hand, government has been consistently trying to make situation better 
by introducing various relief measures. Out of the various measures announced by the government, it seems that the government is trying to focus on its roots. With roots, what I refer to is MSMEs. So one view is that since MSMEs are more vulnerable and hence they are a center of attraction for these relief measures. But another perspective to this could be that since MSMEs possess a great potential, so giving a boost to the MSMEs will have the repercussion of giving a boost to the entire economy. And that is what my today's topic is all about MSME boost for economy. My discussion would further entail about what is the revised definition of MSME, a summary of the relief measures introduced under Atmanirbhar Bharat for MSMEs and how all this will give a boost to the economy. So let's begin. The earlier definition was framed in 2006 and had only a criteria of investment. However, the revised definition has a composite criteria of both investment and turnover. So the definition goes as an entity having investment up to 1 crore and turnover up to 5 crore is micro enterprise. An enterprise having investment greater than 1 crore but up to 10 crore and turnover greater than 5 crore but up to 50 crore is small enterprise. And similarly, the upper limits for medium enterprises are 50 crore for investment and 250 crore for turnover. The medium enterprises definition was revised. What I told you is the latest one. So next is uh, how what are the measures introduced under Atmanirbhar Bharat? Various measures were introduced. So let's see the some, some of them. The first is emergency credit line guarantee scheme. Basically, the government aims to provide rupees 3 lakh crore automatic loan that to without security to the existing MSME borrowers. So let's see who are eligible for this. Firstly, your total borrowing as on 29 February should not be more than 25 crore. Your account should be a regular account, SMA0 account or SMA1 account. You, your turnover should not exceed rupees 100 crore and you should be GST registered wherever such registration is mandatory. Here are some of the features of the ECLGS. 20% of the outstanding amount will be provided to you at, as additional credit. Uh, for the tenor of the loan will be four years with a moratorium of one year on principle. Interest rate will be capped by RBI. No additional security will be required and further uh, no processing charges or uh, no processing charges will be levied on the borrower. So this all this can be availed till 31st of October 2020 or till the time the entire fund of rupees 3 lakh crore gets sanctioned. The second scheme is subordinated debt of rupees 220,000 crore. This is a historic move as it has never ever happened in the history of Indian economy that government is specifically providing loans to stressed and NPM SMEs. So basically the amount will be given to promoters who will introduce the same into their business as equity. So not only this will enhance their borrowing capacity, but this will also enhance their further borrowing power as these people will improve on their owner's margin. Hence they can borrow more. So this will provide them funding also and further additional borrowing capacity. About 2 lakh MSMEs are expected to be benefited under this scheme. Some other measures are the 50,000 crore equity infusion scheme, which will be operated through fund of funds in which government will invest into those units who have the potential and viability. The government also said that foreign companies will be disallowed up to rupees 200 crore for government procurement processes. Further, the MSME receivables from government and CPSCs shall be released within 45 days. In case you are failing to do so, there will be a reporting. Government aims to promote e-market linkages to substitute the trade fairs. Trade fairs are really important in MSME supply chain. So as trade fairs are not possible under the COVID situation, hence government tends to promote e-commerce. Now, how all this will give a boost to the economy? So the first is large scale employment generation. The huge 1.35 billion population would definitely not survive on air and water. In India, majority of the population is dependent on agriculture for their employment. But the fact that agriculture is still dependent on natural forces makes no difference as these people are only employed but not earning. India recorded an unemployment rate of 23.5% in May 2020. The pandemic made the situation worse by adding further to the unemployment woes, causing companies to lay off their employees. So in a country where increase in population is more than increase in employment opportunities, MSMEs are surely a means to ease the pain by employing 120 million people over the 63 million MSME units. That's really a great figure. 
Further, it is said a lakh rupees investment in MSMEs generates employment for around four people. So basically, MSMEs are labor-intensive units, especially until now, as definition criteria were very low. So labor-intensive units, hence they have a huge potential to create employment. So it can be really a key in India's transition from agrarian to an industrialized economy. The graph shows how much MSMEs contribute to employment across various countries. In India, it is 21%, whereas in Canada, it is as high as 90% and 80% in Italy. This shows in India, we still possess the potential to further increase the share of MSME employment. Next point is inclusive growth. Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi said, I believe growth should be constant, sustained and inclusive. It's only meaningful if these three things are there. Otherwise, they are just economic figures. While the constancy and sustainability of this growth is made by other factors, MSME is surely a means for the inclusive growth. We all know the power of industrial inclusion of areas. Like we know how Tata's plant relocation from Singur to Sanand caused a remarkable trigger for industrialization in Sanand to such an extent that Sanand was even called as India's Detroit in making. But however, there are some areas which lack infrastructure and basic facilities, and hence they do not attract investment. And since they do not attract investment, they still lack that infrastructure and facilities. No one will invest, and hence how that facilities will be created. So this is known as vicious cycle of, of regional imbalance. So basically, this leads to more development of developed units and further disregard for undeveloped and poor areas. So MSMEs are surely helping to achieve the regional parity because they touch upon the lives of the rural and marginalized section of the society. Uh, the various benefits available for the sector, such as easy entry with low investment, makes it a good opportunity for the people of relatively backward area to enter. And no sooner a single unit is established, other units in the form of ancillary units, vertically integrated units, they too get established, and hence a cluster is formed leading to industrialization of a whole area. Thus, this ensures that there is equality in distribution of national income and wealth. Next point is sustain economic growth and increase export. In India, MSMEs contribute around 45% of manufacturing output and 48% of total exports. The sector's contribution to GDP stands at 37.54%. Further, it is said that sector can, has more potential and that to contribute to economy and that too at low investment. Our MSME Minister, Mr. Nitin Gadkariji, said the government aims to increase the share of MSME exports to 60% and GDP share to 50% of the total GDP. That's the potential our government sees in MSMEs. Further, MSMEs and those associated with MSMEs have higher marginal propensity to consume. So a revenue earned by MSME will have higher multiplier effect on the total spending of the economy as compared to those which is earned by bigger units. Thus, this will increase national output. The graph shows how exports have been increasing. This also shows that not only exports, MSMEs shares to export are also showing a growth rate, that too at an increasing rate. Thus, MSMEs really are performing well in export and have further potential to grow. Next point is traditional knowledge, heritage, and culture-based industries. It is very well said by someone that the beauty of the world lies in the diversity of its people. In India, we have multiple villages and states all have their particular traditional and art, which is itself appealing to the whole world. So these village-based industries, these traditions really have, they really lead to creation of many units which manufacture typical traditional and cultural products which have export potential. See, the one example is that India is India is India caters to 90% of the market of handwoven fabric. That's really great to occupy such a large share of one sector. And further, given the right impetus in the form of exposure to global market, financial support, and basic supports, these cultural industries do really have the power to transform the rural landscape of India. Further, Although these low investment units, they are labor intensive and such labor intensive units only can preserve the true nature that is the true essence of these units. Mechanical, that is capital incentive units can't really preserve them. Next point is maintain competition. MSMEs help to maintain the competition which is required to ensure that there is a balance in distribution of power. So 
what if government has not promoted msmes in such a robust manner as it is doing today this would have led to concentration of powers in the hands of few big players who really do have the capability to, to drive out all other players out of the market this could even pay for creation of monopoly which has destructive effects we are very well aware of so msmes really help to ensure that market is properly balanced and there are small units which exist it is said that uh, necessity is the mother of invention i would say necessity is the mother of invention and competition is the father of invention because it's only competition which triggers the players to further strive for innovation invention cost reduction and which ultimately benefits the customers that was how competition plays an important role through msmes my second last point is reducing urban pressure since msmes will lead to a balance in distribution of resources and employment opportunities there would significantly not be any need to migrate from rural to urban areas so this would reduce the strain on urban resources and will cause to improve in standard of living of both rural and urban areas so we all know how much difficulty it is being faced in combating the spread of covid-19 in mumbai and you can see on the screen how much what is the density of population in mumbai it is the most densely populated city hence there is a lot of community transmission over there so since msmes will lead to balance there would not be such so much disparities in population density the population density will be equally spread last point is promote entrepreneurship as msmes are growing day by day and government is also continuously striving to provide more and more benefits for the msmes it has led to the creation of entrepreneurial ecosystem in our country so this leads to self employment and nothing else works better than self employment self employment has a potential to further create employment and contribute to gdp that too at a low investment i would like to say that startup activity is at an all time high in our country even startups can flourish better under the msme framework further a uh, such msme conducive environment will lead to creation of a ecosystem in which we will see it will unleash a young and dynamic un entrepreneurial talent in india who will be willing to make self entrepreneurship their first career choice so hence msmes are important to make sure that entrepreneurship reaches the grassroots level so india produces around 1.2 million graduates every year if i ask you what is the reason behind these people pursuing graduation and completing their education it would simply be a dream a dream of their parents of their family what a middle class family thinks like our son will be a doctor he will be an engineer he will be chartered accountant he will study hard and he will get a good job i still uh, sorry to interrupt but 12 minutes are over 3 minutes to go ha huh. okay so these uh, we have a dream that our children should be employed like they should get a good job hardly any of the dreams include portraying oneself as an employer and not as an employee but one interesting fact i came across is that even if 2% of indians turn entrepreneur and employ around 25 people each half of the indian population will be employed isn't that great so the friend if you ask your parents like that why aren't you self employed why aren't you an entrepreneur so most of them will say beta we weren't born with a silver spoon our parents were not that capable to provide us with investment for our businesses but the thing is that times are such now government is providing you with that silver spoon if not a silver spoon at least a spoon to make sure that you move ahead uh, the current approach of government is that msmes you move ahead we are standing by hence we should take really the benefit of such favorable economic environment and make sure that we promote self entrepreneurship as our first career choice lastly it said that it's not about ideas it's about making ideas happen i would add further and people who make ideas happen are entrepreneurs and what makes entrepreneurs is such msme conducive environment so msmes really do possess the potential to transform act as a catalyst to transform the socio economic status of the country msmes are helping to really achieve the basic objectives of fighting poverty creating employment reducing urban rural mi mi migration so why not it will provide a boost to the economy and lastly it that today as sir said today is msme day so based on the world's uh, perception about msmes this year theme stresses on msmes first respond responders to societal needs what msmes first responders to societal needs i hope my presentation was able to convince you on that thank you
Thank you, Harshal. Well done. Now, I would request our next paper presenter, Mr. Atharva Devare from Pune, to present his paper. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Atharva, you are audible. Okay, I am just sharing my screen. Atharva, before you start, uh, I want to tell all the judges that uh, Harshil took exact 15 minutes to present his paper. Uh, yes, Atharva, you may begin. Okay. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, your screen is visible, you are audible, and your time starts now. Uh, okay. Uh, respected judges, seniors, and my fellow uh, CA students, I am very good evening, and I am Atharva Devre from Satara. I am presenting here my the topic, which is MSME Boost for Economy, uh, where its name suggests it covers the all the small and medium businesses running in our economy in its con concept. So uh, these are the concepts which I am going to explain one by one. That is introduction, its role in our India, criteria, its benefits, drawbacks, uh, the role of MSME in the COVID-19 and after COVID-19. And lastly, the conclusion that whether really the MSME is a boost for economy or not. So without wasting any time, just let's get started. So the introduction to MSME. Uh, micro, small, medium enterprises are governed under the MSME Development Act 2006. So, in 2006, the Special Act was uh, passed in the Parliament of India to provide the assistance to the small and medium businesses running in our country. And also, the Special uh, Ministry was also introduced, that is, Ministry of MSME, uh, which is continuously uh, running very good and providing various types of assistance and schemes. Uh, to develop the small businesses in our country. Uh, the MSMEs are regarded as a backbone of economic development of developing countries. So the developing countries is very important here. Uh, India is a developing country and we know the share of a part or a part of the informal sector in our India is very huge or comparatively higher uh, where, where the MSMEs are acting massively to create the employment for as the blue collar for the blue collar purpose and they are providing a large number of employment and the share in the gdp of our country is comparatively higher and it's increasing day by day so if we talk about the world's economy the sme represent approximately 90 percent of the businesses and 50 percent of the employment uh, in each country there are uh, different criteria for the uh, classification of enterprises as the small medium uh, enterprises so if we consider all the criteria, we can see that there is approximately 90% businesses are covered under this concept and this provide a 50% uh, employment. So we can see the huge impact of the MSMEs or SMEs on our economy or the world economy. Uh, there is uh, some statistics I have given there, which are the key sectors attracting the startups MSMEs. Uh, the current era is, uh, we can say that it is a startup era where a lot of college graduates or the experienced professionals are uh, entering into the startups. They are setting up their own startups in variety of range in the commerce. And But the common link between all these startups is large number of startups are registered themselves under the MSA and uh, having their Udyog Aadhaar number. Because uh, the gov our government of India is well aware about the development of the MSME. So they know that if uh, MSME sector is developed, then it is directly linked to the economic development of our country because it covers a large number of informal sector as well. So uh, these startups are uh, increasing day by day and they are registered under MSMEs to avail the lot of schemes, lot of benefits uh, provided by the government and the Ministry of MSMEs. Uh, then moving forward, uh, role of MSMEs in India. In India, till that there are approximately 6.8 million MSMEs are registered. 
the website is udyogadhar.gov.in where you can register your uh, business as a MSME if you fulfill the criteria. It contributes over 7% in manufacturing GDP and 24.64% in the service GDP. And in terms of employment, around 120 people are uh, engaged with the MSME. So uh, we can see the huge impact of MSMEs in our country. And uh, as I said, the lack of startups are registered themselves under MSMEs and starting their businesses. It provides nearly 6,000 product range. So there is a very vast product range in which the MSMEs are providing their services and manufacturing their products and entering into the markets. The next point is Make in India project. In 2024, the Modi government introduced the Make in India project and they insisted our Indian population to uh, reduce the imports and produce large number or produce a maximum products in our own country rather than importing them. So, and they uh, also provided various schemes and subsidies uh, who are regi who registered under Make in India project or else. So, uh, MSME uh, businesses took a lot of benefit from this scheme and uh, they entered into, as I said, 6,000, uh, there is a wide range of 6,000 products. They entered into the large number of products and produced themselves in India and entered into the international market, market through export. So previously we are importing from the other countries, but through Make in India project, we produce these products in our country and start exporting them. So it ultimately increase our uh, foreign exchange foreign reserves also it uh, increase our gdp so it has a huge impact on our economy so now talking about the rural india as we all know 70 percent of the uh, population our indian population is residing in the rural areas and where uh, the main occupation is agriculture but nowadays the ministry of msmes are well aware about the development of MS msme sector so they are providing a large number of training sessions, uh, counseling sessions, other uh, monetary benefits to uh, and educating those farmers to uh, develop their ideas, to think outside the box and to start some uh, other businesses regarding the agricultural products or to start producing the agricultural products on the basis of their main occupation of agriculture. So uh, and we can see the statistics are given here and the result of the rural India development through MSMEs. So number of rural uh, MSMEs in India are 51%. There, that is 324.88 lakhs and the urban MSMEs are 49%. So rural MSMEs are greater than urban and in terms of employment, uh, rural MSMEs are providing employment to the 45% and uh, urban MSMEs are providing employment of the 55%. So we can see that there is a head-to-head -head competition and we cannot undermine the rural businesses or rural MSMEs. They are giving a strong competition to urban. So they have a huge impact. And this also uh, increase or this also uh, uh, provides to large number of uh, employment in rural area along with the income generation in the rural areas apart from farming. And this also decreases the gap between the rural India and the urban India. So now talking about the revised MSME classification of manufacturing and service industry. Earlier there was a criteria on the basis of investments made in, in uh, plant and machinery rather than land and building. And there was a different criteria for manufacturing industry and service industry. But in the latest uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan economic uh, package, introduced by our Indian government, uh, they have, uh, they introduced a revised classification and they introduced the criteria of turnover along with the investment. So as we can see the for micro, they added a turnover criteria of 5 crores for small 50 crores and to medium it's 250 crores. So if we see the, uh, if a manufacturing company whose turnover is 150 crore or 200 crore, still it considered as a MSME. So as we can see, they have widened their walls to cover large number of enterprises under MSME so that uh, they can avail the uh, various benefits and monetary benefits and other schemes 
to develop themselves to develop their businesses and ultimately develop our indian economy so uh, these conditions are mutually exclusive so my, for micro enterprises investment must be less than 1 crore turnover less than 5 crore for small uh, investment 10 crore turnover 50 crore and for medium investment 100 crore and turnover 250 crore to classify themselves as a micro small or medium enterprise respectively now talking about the benefits and government assistance as i said earlier the government is very well aware about the uh, msme development uh, government is providing a collateral free loans where one can avail the loan facility without giving any collateral uh, there are various numerous subsidies to power electricity bills subsidies taxes uh, the taxes were uh, in the latest budget uh, income tax budget or uh, our budget in for 2021 uh, government has introduced a new right new income tax structure uh, new income tax structure along with also they have increased the basic turnover criteria of tax audit to 1 uh, 1 crore to 5 crore so that it reduce the compliance uh, liability to these businesses also it reduce the compliance expenditure to these businesses also the government has increased the gst registration turnover to 40 crore also composition scheme turnover is also increased so that the uh, so that businesses can avail the maximum tax benefits uh, also there are various subsidies in exports patent expenditure iso certification if uh, one can uh, register their uh, register or to obtain a certification under iso the government is ready to reimburse all the expenditure incurred by the businesses to obtain the iso certification also the capital expenditure capital subsidies are given by government uh, the another point is protection against the delayed payment from date of payment except 45 days the msmes have a right to uh, charge the compound interest that is triple from the uh, interest the interest given by the rbi on the on their debtors uh, who delayed their payment above 45 days so this is the protection against the delayed payment against the bad debts also the assistance from government by organizing the trade fairs exhibitions business meet at the international level to promote the exports to uh, bring their local product to the international market uh, also the special tenders are issued by the government only for the msmes where only msmes can uh, enter into those tenders or participate in those tenders launching various schemes and enha to enhance the ease of doing business and uh, also the restriction on global uh, giants that is global competitors global companies who enter into the government procurement tenders up to 200 crores this uh, this scheme has introduced in the latest package of uh, atmanirbhar bharat now we talk about the benefits but there are some drawbacks or the difficulties faced by the msmes first is huge competition from global giants and in international as well as local markets uh, the main point is they don't have a third was sorry huh? sorry to interrupt 12 minutes are over 3 minutes okay. to go okay uh so, uh they don't have enough capital or uh, enough uh, amount of cash to compete with the global giants lack of skilled force lack of proper skill development and lack of innovation or outdated technology due to uh, inadequacy of capital or uh, cash for their reasons so uh, role of msme after covid-19 pandemic as we all know covid-19 has affected uh, in all aspects to the economy uh, it around the around 473 lakh crore loans are remain outstanding which is given to msmes it, uh, but the msmes has a great influence on employment generation gdp so they definitely have a chance to revive themselves from the from this pandemic and revive our economy as well so also the large number of youth has lost their jobs and are unemployed but by pro giving them proper training they can enter into the msme or start their own business so these are the some government assistance to msmes that is gst payment department government has deferred the 3 months to 3 months income tax payment uh, for 1920 the income tax return date is on is deferred uh, till 30 november uh, 50 crore into equity infusion government is ready to invest in msmes fund 
uh, the ideas which are developed by the Indian uh, Indians and uh, help them in develop their businesses. Uh, revising the definition of MSME to widen their walls to include large number of businesses into the MSMEs and as I said restriction on global giants to enter the contract up to 200 crore with government. So last point is conclusion. Whether MSMEs are really termed as a boost for economy or not. After considering all the points, one cannot be thought that MSMEs are not beneficial for the economy. It has a great impact on employment generation, GDP, economic development, reducing the urban and rural gap, uh, increasing the per capita income, etc. So it has a huge impact on our economy. The main economist has predicted that India will become a developed country by 200, 2050 and in next 10 years, the Indian economy will surge by 2.5% and will be of $7 trillion and become a third largest economy in the world. But the current, there is a COVID-19 pandemic. We face a lot of issues. Businesses are facing a lot of issues uh, due to the lockdown. Their businesses are shut for three months. Uh, so they face a huge losses. Uh, loans are outstanding. So a lot of problems are there. So question is, is it really possible after this pandemic that uh, India will become a developer to 2050 or in 10 years it will become third largest economy. The honest answer is yes, it is possible. But the most important uh, part which, or a sector which needs to be developed is the MSM. Government is taking a large number of uh, steps to provide them assistance, to encourage themselves in enter into the international market, etc. So in India, there is a around 65% population is below 35, 30-35 age. So we have a large number of youth population who is ready to work hard, ready to give their 100% and to develop themselves. So if we uh, conclude that MSMEs are the boost for the economy, this youth or the youth needs to be uh, considered the role of MSMEs in our India and try to become an entrepreneur, not an employer, or not an employee, sorry, become an employer, not an employee, so that they can uh, enter or they can earn more money, they can, they become developed and ultimately our Indian economy will be developed. Thank you. Thank you, Atharva. Judges, please note Atharva took 16 minutes to complete his presentation. A minute extra. Now I would request our next paper presenter, Ms. Ellis Singh from Hawra, West Bengal, to present her paper. Hello, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Ellis, you are audible. Uh, OK, then uh, if you ask me to start, I'll start over. Okay. Uh, your time starts now. Good evening, everyone. This is Alice Singh from Havra, West Bengal. And my topic, as you'll see, is MSME boost to economy. Well, this topic is mainly linked to the current conditions of our economy more than our professional academic knowledge. As being in the profession of chartered accountants, we all know that we are often termed as doctors of the economy. And as doctors, we must be well versed with the nerves of the economy. Currently, MSME is the most talked about nerve whose proper functioning is the need of an hour. Okay, so time for being vocal for local. But wait, don't you want to know about your local? Have you heard about Krishi Jagran Agricultural Magazine? Nature Organic Promoter of Planet Friendly Farming Practices? Well, these are examples of micro enterprises. What about Maitri Inc? the manufacturer of top quality bronzes and stone sculptures, or Elite Decor, the manufacturer of home furnishing and home decor goods. These are some of the small enterprises. You must have seen the ad of Springfit Mattress, the mattress industry, which engages many Bollywood TV actors to promote its ad. And next is the Chai Point, the largest organized chai retailer in India. Well, these are some examples of medium enterprises. Now, my main aim behind sharing all these news with you is I would like you all to note all these names because they are going to take over 
the sector and take over the market share by replacing all the multinationals. As you know, that India is going vocal for local. Now, what is MSME? Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi on MSME said, while many think that large companies dominate in reality, it is over 55 million small units like yours which drive our economy through small manufacturing, trading, and service businesses. You should be able to run your business easily, not be harassed by officials, and get loan for your day-to-day -day activities, material for your operation, and markets for your product. In short, this is a highly vibrant and dynamic sector that provides large employment opportunities at comparatively lower capital costs than large industries, helps in industrialization of rural and backward areas. Now, which sector looks up to MSME? Well, it's the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, which aims at imparting greater vitality and growth impetus to the sector in terms of output, employment and exports and instills a competitive culture based on heightened technology awareness. Created back in October 1999, it is currently headed since 31st May 2019 by Sri Nitin Gadkari, our cabinet minister, and Sri Pratap Chandra Sarangi, our minister of state. Well, what are they facilitating? They are facilitating adequate flow of credit, technology upgradation and modernization, infrastructural facilities, modern testing facilities, access to modern management practices, entrepreneurship development, product development, welfare of artisans and workers, domestic and export markets, capacity building and empowerment. MSME, the booster. Yes, the making of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Now, with GDP expected to touch at 8.5% and country likely to be US dollar 5 trillion by 2025, as predicted by our Department of Economic Affairs, this sector is giving employment to over 11 crore people. Yes, that contributes to nearly 29% of our GDP. Now, I would like to quote our Union Finance Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman. Atmanirbhar Bharat does not mean India becomes inward looking or isolate itself. That will not happen. It is just a focus on becoming self-reliant and grow local brands and businesses. Yes, she hinted MSME. Now you must have got the hint of the secret strategy that India is planning. Now, as per the current situation, both COVID-19 economic consequences since late March 2020 and the current Indo-China tension since June 2020, all are stressing towards making India self-reliant, Atman Nirbhar, and focus on itself. But the question is how? And the answer is focus on MSME. Now, what are the arms provided by our government to fight this COVID-19 impact of Atman Nirbhar Bharat? Now, first of all, they thought of changing the definition, and the definition was changed, the investment limit revised upwards. Now, drawing a dif difference between MSMED Act 2006 and the financial relief package on account of COVID-19 crisis, there are two classifications in the previous definition of manufacturing enterprises and service enterprises, whereas there is no such definition in the current definition. The investment-based definition is now being subdivided into investment-based as also with the turnover-based definition. As you see, the initial start is of multiplying four times the limit. As you see, it has raised from 25 lakh to 1 crore in the investment side, and the limit goes as such. In the old definition, it's 25 lakh, 5 crore, 10 crore. While in the new definition, it's 1 crore, 5 crore, 10 crore, 20 crore. Now, service enterprise has been merged into manufacturing side in the new definition there has come the turnover-based definition of limit 5 crore, 50 crore, and 100 crore. Now, you must note that the limit of 100 crore is opposed to rupees 250 crore that was proposed in the MSME Amendment Bill 2018. What are the other battle weapons given to our MSME sector to fight against COVID-19? Now, as you all know, on the 13th May 2020, the press meet of our finance minister out of the announcement on 15 key decisions, 40%, yes, six key decisions were directed towards MSME. First came the collateral free automatic loan of up to rupees 3 lakh crore. 
on which 100% credit guarantee cover was given by the government to banks and NBFC. Then came the liquidity of rupees 20,000 crore. Yes, the 20,000 crore liquid fund for stressed MSMEs. Then came the big amount of 50,000 crore equity infusion. Then came the listing of MSMEs. Now, listing will give confidence, transparency, and visibility, giving this company leapfrog growth. Next was the tenders up to rupees 200 crore for the government procurement since they will no longer be on global tender route. Then was the most important and the most required as there was e-market linkage facility to be given to MSME so that they can find their market easily. And others were honoring the receivables of MSMEs within 45 days. Now I would like to hint you all to the MSME annual report 2013-14. Number of SMEs as per that report was 42.5 million estimated with both registered and un unregistered that staggered 95% of the total industrial units. The SME and employment opportunity was next only to the agriculture sectors with about 106 million, 40% of the Indian workforce, producing more than 6,000 products. Currently, around 6.11% was by the manufacturing GDP and 24.63% by the service sector GDP. SME output was 45% of the total Indian manufacturing output and 40% of the total exports was contributed by the MSME sector. Bank lending was accounting for 16% with current fixed assets at 14,71,912 crores and they tried to maintain an average growth rate of over 10%. Hinting the current scenario with MSME annual report 2018-19. As I bring to you this pie chart, you see there's not much a difference between three categories, the manufacturing, trade, and other services. All are around at 30%, with highest at 36% by trade. The next comes the other service, and then the 31% manufacturing. Well, you see that electricity is the sector that we need to look upon with being negligible amount of 0.03%, which comes out to be 0% in totality. Next is the estimated number of employees in the broad activity category wise. You see, as you know, that trade and the other services are forming the large part. The urban sector ruled in this two trade and other activity categories with 226 lakhs in the trade side by the urban. The tra other services also had a higher amount in the urban employment side. Well, you see, there is a dip in the manufacturing side where the rural ruled yes the rural ruled at 186 lakhs that is more than the urban side electricity as you know is negligible now i would like to hint on the key results of the national sample survey that was of 2015-16 other than mentioning above the contribution by msme sector in the country's economy was GVA 31.83% and GDP at 28.9%. Uttar Pradesh being the largest state-wise distribution at 14.2%, the socially backward groups owned almost 66.27% of MSMEs through bulk, where OBCs owned 49.72% of the 66%. Now, what changed this MSME? What are the key challenges they faced? Well, access to finance is the most important key challenge that they face which is now being helped by the government by giving this liquidity and equity access to market for which the government has come up with e-market linkage access to infrastructure for which funds are being provided by the government now access to skilled people access to technology and environmental constraints and issues regarding regulatory facilitation mm -hmm. How these MSMEs can tide over and emerge as multinationals of the future? Now, you see, I would like to hint some government schemes that have come up to pave ways for MSMEs growth and development. First is the Make in India initiative that facilitates investment, innovation, skill development. And then I would like to hint the zero defect and zero effect slogan that was specially for this MSME sector by our honorable prime minister, Shri Narendra Modi. 
which aimed at exporting goods that are never returned to us. Then comes the Digital India Revolution that promoted MSME's participation in the information, communication, and telecommunication sector. Last is the latest, Atmanirbhar Bharat, with based on five pillars or strengths that can help India by focusing on economy, infrastructure, system, democracy, demand. What are the future prospects of MSMEs? I hope you all want to know this. Yes, I would like to say it to you. In the last two decades, the growth curve of the Indian economy is largely controlled by this sector. With a whooping 40% to the country's GDP through the 20 lakh crore of goods and services it produces, it is the engine of livelihood to billions of people. As per the latest report of MSME Pulse April 2020 by TransUnion Civil and SIBI, this sector credit continues to have the lowest default rate and structurally stronger MSMEs are likely to be least impacted in the lockdown. You know, this clearly depicts how well the sector is utilizing the credit it is availing and is hinting that you can invest it in. Now, to sum up, campaigns like Make in India, Atmanirbhar Bharat have all directed their efforts towards promising this sector. Not only this, the sector has itself continuously strived hard so that now it is being relied upon for giving the nation its developed nation title. Unforeseen, yes, I would like to conclude it now. Unforeseen circumstances will come in the journey, but if we are committed to our purpose, we will figure out how to make through this journey. Concluding, happy MSME day to all. A big thank you to the entire Vaikasa and Saikasa team for giving students like me the opportunity of presenting in front of eminent personalities of our profession. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Judges, so much. kindly note. Judges, kindly note. Alice took 13 minutes 45 seconds to complete the paper presentation. Well done, Alice. This is what dedication looks like. Paper presenters exceeded everyone's expectations. A huge congratulations to all of you. Moving further, I would like to request our judges for the session to give some comments and also to guide and mentor them. The results would be declared at our fifth day, that is our valedictory session on 38th June. I request Sir Sita Raman Ayer to please give remarks to of our presenters. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. First of all, uh, congratulations to all the three presenters. And uh, I'm really happy that uh, the CA students, I think the topics given were, as uh, one of the uh, key speakers were telling, is befit to be done by chartered accountants. This is a CA seminar uh, topic, which has been taken up by the, the CA students. And all of them have done exceedingly well. And uh, really, I, I, I really want to say that uh, at your age, when we were students, uh, this was not possible. We never had the uh, confidence and the knowledge to uh, present a quality presentation like this. And uh, so kudos to all the people. Harshil has uh, very nicely understood the uh, intricacies and the uh, content of the MSME uh, um, schemes that has been launched by the central government right now. And uh, I wish he had uh, done much some more uh, work on the present uh, uh, scenario and the impact of this these uh, MSME uh, boosts the line of credits that the, the government is giving. Atharva's uh, 
presentation was uh, very good and it uh, contained more about the startups he had i think uh, done a, a lot of study on the startups and i feel that uh, startups are necessarily uh, msmes to start with and they grow into a big uh, unicorn uh, structures in days and i, I was very really, really surprised the quality of uh, presentation by allies uh, the content the presentation and uh, the uh, what do you say the relevance of our talk to the present scenario was uh, need to be appreciated uh, i thank uh, the nagpur chapter nagpur branch of the chartered accountants and the vikasa for uh, thinking appropriate to take me on the panel of judges best wishes to all of you and uh, it, in this uh, i would like to say that all the three all the three people and others also it's not the matter of who wins or uh, loses this uh, presentation competition but it's the matter of the quality of presentation and i feel that uh, they will be joining our profession very soon and we will be hearing them uh, too often on and of the uh, digital platform thank you very much thank you so much sir for your valuable remarks now i request ye british papad sir to please give your remarks on our presenters hello aap sun pa rahe ho yes sir. yes sir good evening to all msme is all time my favorite topic why it is so because it is the first step towards mega jab bhi msme ki baat hoti hai to nayi ideas aati hai jab bhi hamare paas koi naya msme customer aata hai naya msme clients aate hai to nayi ideas ke sath aate hai ekdam root level se aate hai aur ye lifetime article ship hai जिसको आप लव करेंगे वो हमें बताता है कि मुझे ये प्रोजेक्ट डालना है तो कौन सा सब्सिडी मुझे आएगा कौन सा इंसेंटिव मुझे मिलेगा कौन सा बैंकिंग मुझे हेल्प करेगा देन वी स्टार्ट्स। तो एज एन प्रोफेशनल ये बहुत अच्छी चीज है इस टॉपिक को ऐसे डील करना जिस तरीके से तीनों प्रेजेंटर्स ने किया है काफी सराहनीय है समय कम है 15 मिनट्स का एमएसएमई काफी बड़ा समय है काफी बड़ा सब्जेक्ट है जैसे जुल्फेश भाई ने अपने रिमार्क्स में कहा कि कल जो डिफिनेशन आई मैं कहता हूं एक घंटा नहीं जुल्फेश भाई एक दिन भी बोल सकते हैं उसके ऊपर और अय्यर साहब जो है वो सूरज है हम दिया है इतने टफ टॉपिक को 15 मिनट्स में सारी चीजों के साथ डील करना और ये प्लेटफॉर्म मिलना जबकि सारे लोग डिजी अपने लॉकडाउन में अपने घर बैठे हैं आईसीआई ने ये प्लेटफॉर्म अवेलेबल करा देना स्टूडेंट्स को ये भी बड़ी बात है हमारे समय ये सब सारी चीजें नहीं थी यू आर लकी और जो आप सुन रहे हैं जो प्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं वो तो है ही है लेकिन जिन लोगों ने इसमें सारा कुछ प्रयास किया होगा किसी ने विकासा टीम ने कुछ किया होगा कुछ उनके फ्रेंड्स ने कुछ किया होगा कुछ लोग घर बैठ के सुन रहे होंगे कुछ लोग प्रिपेयर कर रहे होंगे दे ऑल आर गेटिंग समथिंग एमएसएमई वही है मतलब इसको दो चीजों को अलग अलग तरीके से आप जोड़ो एमएसएमई में जो अब जैसे हम ऑफिशियल प्लेसेस में हैं तो ऑफिशियल प्लेसेस में आने वाला कस्टमर भी उतना पढ़ा लिखा नहीं रहता लेकिन हर बड़ा इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट पहले एमएसएमई हुआ पहले छोटा इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट हुआ फिर यहां से ही वो बड़ा हुआ आप हीरो को लो आप रिलायंस को लो आप बेडलास को लो आप टाटा को लो एनी 
एज अ प्रोफेशनल कंसल्टेंट ये हमें बहुत सेटिस्फेक्शन देता है बाद में कि हाँ ये हमने ये किया तो थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी थैंक यू अमरावती ब्रांच नागपुर ब्रांच थैंक यू थैंक यू सर फॉर सच ग्रेशियस वर्ड नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट आर ऑल टैलेंटेड सेशन चेयरमैन सी जुल्फे शाह सर टू गिव हिज रिमार्क्स फॉर द सेशन and uh, it was indeed a very nice presentation meticulously uh, designed meticulously, uh, meticulously presented and uh, the the online presentation was great by all the three participants arshil and uh, atharva and ms alice all the three were good and uh, the judges have a very difficult task to choose the best among the best but still uh, i think you have worked very hard on the uh, subject and covered mostly the uh, relevant points of the msme sector and uh, some uh, remarks uh, as a chairman i would like to say ki startup jo hai wo आज हम लोग स्टार्टअप की बात करते हैं वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टार्टअप सो मेनी टाइम्स एंड पीपल थिंक दैट देयर आर सम इंसेंटिव्स हिडन इंसेंटिव्स या बहुत ज्यादा उसमें इंसेंटिव्स है कि स्टार्टअप का अगर डेफिनेशन स्टार्टअप का अगर यूनिट डाला तो गवर्नमेंट से काफी कंसेशन है टैक्स हॉलीडेज है हनी प्लीज म्यूट ऑल ऑफ देम यस disturbance is there but at present situation the uh, statistical data show that uh, almost more than 95% of the startups are failure in the initial phase so bank finance is uh, very rarely available to them they have to search for the Uh, venture capitalists or the private equity funders and all this type of people who can invest who can see the potential in that startup and then uh, they can take off so initial stage funding is there but growth stage funding is not there for startup this is one of the uh, you can say shortcoming for the startup uh, india jo humne kafi launch kiya tha modi ji ne first modi ji ke first jo phase thi first government usme और उसके बाद बैंक ने उसको उतना इनकरेज नहीं किया ड्यू टू दी पास्ट रिकॉर्ड ऑफ द स्टार्टअप्स बट एमएसएमई अगर हम बात करें जो भी स्टार्टअप का भी कोई आता है तो हम उसे पहले कहेंगे कि पहले तू एमएसएमई में रजिस्ट्रेशन करा यू रजिस्टर योर सेल्फ अंडर एम एस बिकॉज अब ढाई करोड़ का टर्न और पचास करोड़ का प्लांट एंड मशीनरी इन्वेस्टमेंट ये अब काफी हद तक एक ब्रॉडर रीना में है तो मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टार्टअप विल फिटिंग टू दिस एंड एम एस एम ई आफ्टर गेटिंग एम एस एम ई रजिस्ट्रेशन देन यू स्लोली ट्राई टू गेट इट रजिस्टर्ड एट स्टार्टअप इट इज डन फ्रॉम द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री दे इशू द सर्टिफिकेट फॉर स्टार्टअप देन यू बिकम अ रियल स्टार्टअप देन यू कैन एंजॉय ऑल द हॉलीडेज सो स्टार्टअप की बात ये क्या पे कही गई जो बूस्टर फॉर इकोनॉमी है एक्सपोर्ट्स की बात कही गई एक्सपोर्ट्स का भी काफी कवर किया गया तो एक्सपोर्ट्स नो डाउट एमएसएमई सेक्टर इज कंट्रीब्यूटिंग 45 परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री बट स्टिल दे डू नॉट नो व्हाट इंसेंटिव्स आर देयर एंड व्हाट फैसिलिटीज दे कैन अवेल सो दैट फैसिलिटी दर इंटरेस्ट इक्विलाइजेशन फंड स्कीम इज देयर फॉर एम एस एम ई एक्सपोर्टर्स इन विच द फंड इज गिवन एट फाइव परसेंट बाई दी बैंकर्स सो दिस टाइप ऑफ स्कीम्स यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ टू गाइड यूर क्लाइंट्स बट एज अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ दिस ग्रेट अवर नोबल कोर्स ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंसी यू हैव डन वेल ऑल द थ्री स्पीकर्स एंड माई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन दैट यू पार्टिसिपेटेड इन दिस leadership summit and a very apt topic of msme on this international msme day and best of luck best of luck for your future and for this uh, results uh, the judges are doing their 
task now and uh, i think results are declared now or afterwards akshay afterwards sir on the last day 15th 8 june तो हमें हमें बता देना कि कौन विनर हुआ और कौन है लेकिन तीनों विनर है तीनों ने बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन दिया और बहुत अच्छा एक यहाँ पे एमएसएमई पे आपका एक लीडरशिप समिट के अंदर वेबिनार हुआ कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू नागपुर ब्रांच एंड कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू अमरावती ब्रांच और अमरावती ब्रांच सेक्रेटरी कैन बी सीन सुनील सलामपुरिया जी गुड इवनिंग टू यू एंड Thank you very much for inviting me as a chairman of this session. अभी पिछले एक महीने में पंद्रह सोलह सेशंस एमएसएमई पे हो चुके हैं अलग अलग ब्रांचेस में तो एमएसएमई ही दिखता है सोते उठते जागते एमएसएमई ही आता है और नींद में भी एमएसएमई एमएसएमई चलते रहता है तो अभी इतना उसका है आज भी गडकरी साहब ने एड्रेस किया इंटरनेशनल एम एस एम ई डे में काफी प्रोग्राम्स थे लाइव काफी प्रोग्राम्स आए तो दिस ऑल थिंग्स आर मोटिवेशनल फॉर अस एंड कीप अस गोइंग इन दिस डिफिकल्ट फेस तो हमें भी हमारे क्लाइंट को थोड़ा मोटिवेट करते रहना है सो आई विश यू ऑल अ वेरी स्टे हेल्दी एंड स्टे सेफ स्टे हेल्दी तूफान के हालात है न किसी सफर में रहो पंछियों से गुजारिश है कि सिर्फ अपने शजर में रहो तो अपने शजर में रहो एक थोड़ा सा जो है दूरी बना के रखना है बाकी तो हम लोग ऑनलाइन मिल ही रहे सबसे लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा हम लोगों को पब्लिक में नहीं जाना अवॉइड करना है दैट इज द मेन थिंग यू शुड टेक केयर ऑफ थैंक यू अक्षय फॉर कोऑर्डिनेटिंग एंड गिविंग मी अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरेक्ट विथ यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर फॉर शेयरिंग योर इमेंस नॉलेज एंड योर शायरी इज एब्सोल्युटली मेड अ डे थैंक यू मूविंग Moving further, I would like to request the backbone of Amravati Vikasa, Chairman C. S. Sunil Salam Puriya Sir, to please give closing remarks. He has some technical issue. I feel uh, he is joining. So seeing all the gems of ICI network, be nervous, so yeah, he's tired. Houseler, have to be careful. Houseler, who are the ones 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 who are अरे अयर साहब ताली तो बजाओ क्या ऐसे बैठे हो यार आप चेयर आप सुनील भाई हो गया क्या ठीक अरे चीफ गेस्ट आने वाले हैं क्या अक्षय चीफ गेस्ट आने वाले क्या चेहरा साहब नो सर सर ड्यू टू हिज स्केड्यूल ही कुड इंट कम We can conclude, conclude then. Conclude, please. Yes. Now I call upon Mr. Mukul Soni, Treasurer Nagpur Vikasa, to propose a formal vote of thanks. Thank you, Ani. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, Mukul, you are audible. Good evening, respected dignitaries and all my fellow colleagues attending this summit. This is Mukul Soni, Treasurer Nagpur Branch of Vikasa. It gives me immense pleasure to propose a formal vote of thanks on behalf of Nagpur and Amravati branches of Vikasa, along with eight other branches of Vikasa and Sikasa, for such an informative and insightful session. I would want to express my gratitude 
to our guest uh, guest of honor c a vishal doshi sir vice chairman wirc of ici for giving his valuable time and addressing the gathering as the keynote speaker for the day and gracing this webinar with his presence and enlightening the students with the valuable words as uh, i said by the future of the profession is in the right hands you would definitely try to reach up to your expectations sir thank you so much i would further like to thank ca dulpesh sir past chairman wirc as well as past chairman of nagpur branch of the wirc who spared his precious time for us by gracing this webinar with his presence as the session chairman and sharing his uh, views on the topic and giving a greater insight about the topic in particular we thank you sir now i would sincerely like to thank our judges for the session ca sitaraman ayer sir and ca bridges fafat sir for accepting our invites to be the judges and uh, be uh, mentoring the paper presenters we thank you sir now moving forward i would further like to thank the pillars for the session ca akshay gulane sir chairman nagpur branch of fikasa ca kirit kalyani sir chairman nagpur branch of wirc ca sunil salampuria sir chairman nag chairman amravati branch of fikasa and ca vipul patel sir chairman amravati branch of wirc without whom this leadership summit would not have been possible not to forget ca alan joseph sir chairman ernakulam branch of sikasa without whom the, the day would have been incomplete i would further like to uh, i would specially like to mention the, all the paper presenters who participated in the in this leadership summit and did a great job i would further like to thank all the dignitaries attending this webinar for sparing their valuable and precious time lastly i would like to thank each and every student for their utmost patience and cooperation it is great to host such a wonderful audience without whom uh, this webinar would not have been possible thank you one and thank you all over to you hani thank you mukul for all the wonderful support i on behalf of the organizing branch nagpur and amravati and all the other eight branches nanded ernakulam kolhapur surat satara aurangabad ahmednagar and akola branches of vikasa and sikasa would like to say main akela hi chala tha janab e manzil magar log sath aate gaye aur karwa banta gaya with these words i hani khatri would like to end day 2 of leadership summit see you all tomorrow at the same time good night shubhratri shapakhe